one man's labor of love finally lands on consoles, in what is one of the best-looking 2D games ever made. Ten of the worst fighting game bosses readers feature when Owlboy was first released on PC in late 2016 it was described as being nine years in the making. We don't know exactly when work started, but that means it's now been at least a decade between inception and appearing on home consoles. Normally ITD seem impossible for a game not to disappoint with that kind of build-up, but Owlboy remains one of the most visually impressive and enjoyable indie games we've ever played. As is obvious almost at a glance, Owlboy really is a labor of love. Its mammoth development time is due to the normal difficulties of indie development, but also lead designers Henrik Staffness Anderson's struggles with depression. According to him the game is inspired by old NES games such as Super Mario Bros. 3 and Kid Icarus, but as you can see the visuals are far beyond that, with a much more modern graphic style he refers to as Hybit. The game's setting is a floating island in the sky, where a population of owl people find themselves under attack by pirates. You take control of a young mute named Otis, a sad, bullied figure who starts the game in such a miserable state that it's quite heartbreaking to watch. And although he and his friends eventually get into some typical world-saving adventures, the storytelling is surprisingly complex and emotional, with serious themes always hiding just below the surface. Although Otis can obviously fly, he only has a simple spin attack with which to defend himself. And so one of the main gameplay elements is the option to carry others and make use of their special abilities. Otis has three best friends who he can always rely on, but there are also a number of other more fleeting alliances that mean you're always on the lookout for new acquaintances. Weapons of various sorts are the most common kind of help, but there's also a Metroidvania element where you're teased with impassable obstacles and have to find the right person to help. Allies can be teleported directly to you, thereby avoiding any problems with backtracking, but there's still an impressive depth to the mechanics. Combat works like a dual stick shooter, and moves for both Otis and his friends can be upgraded with in-game currency. Most abilities also have dual uses as well, for both defense and puzzle solving, which is where the game also bears comparison with The Legend of Zelda. Owlboy also resembles WayForward's Shantai, both in terms of the Nintendo-esque gameplay and the Metal Slug-style 2D artwork. But Owlboy is easily the superior in terms of visuals, with some astonishingly beautiful backdrops and incredible animation. It's not really retro, since old 16-bit games never looked this good, but instead Owlboy feels like the natural evolution of 90s pixel graphics if the art form hadn't been sidelined by the adoption of 3D in the PlayStation era. But just as remarkable is the soundtrack by Jonathan Gear. As with the graphics there is a retro tinge to the music, but given the prominence of live instruments, instead of digital, it feels just as unique and progressive as the visuals. It also manages to match the events of the game perfectly, whether action or drama, segueing from one to the other with impressive grace. In terms of faults, Otis is a bit slow and his movement lacks a certain amount of precision. But that seems to be a design decision meant to convey his character via gameplay, and it's consistent enough that you soon get used to it. You could also argue that some of the dungeon puzzles are a little cliched, if you've played a lot of similar games, but they're still well beyond the switch-pulling banality of most mainstream games. The only actively bad thing in terms of design is the final boss, which is a complete chore to defeat. But even that may be purposeful given how affecting the finale is, and how you're suddenly made to feel guilty for wishing such a wonderfully made game would end. The only other unfortunate aspect is that the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions, which were also supposed to be out this week, have been downgraded to TBA. The May 29th date is just the physical releases. It's a shame, because we were looking forward to recommending to everyone what was one of our favorite games of 2016. But we hope it should at least be available everywhere within a few weeks or months. Either way, this is still one of the most emotionally rich video games of recent years, as well as one of the best examples of pixel art to ever take roast on consoles. In short, a superbly crafted 2D adventure that is a near-perfect blend of new and old influences, in terms of both gameplay and the stunning visuals and music. Pros, some of the best pixel art ever in a video game, with amazing animation. Heartful storytelling, superb music, and some very clever gameplay ideas, especially the interchangeable allies.
Cons controls could stand to be a little tight when the final boss is a real pain. Score 9 tenths formats Nintendo Switch reviewed Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC price £18.99 Publisher D-Pad Studio Developer Blitworks and D-Pad Studio release date the 13th of February 2018 Age rating 3 Email Game Central at acmetro.co.uk Leave a comment below and follow us on Twitter.